Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I am hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. And today's upload is going to be an episode on who is most likely to see snow this fall or who is most likely to see a snowy fall, something along those lines. I was going to say who is most likely to see a snowy fall, but but usually, you know, fall is a time of the year where you don't typically see too much snow. So it's most locations typically see one snow event in the fall um and then um uh, december 1st meteorologically starts winter so through november i just felt like if this was more appropriate who's most likely to see snow uh, and this is obviously for the 2019 uh year and this was also a third or a three-year anniversary of this video uh, it's been going on for three years already uh, this video and it's been uh, it's been quite a while since uh, I made my last one a year ago, so let's just jump right into this. Consider subscribing, um, consider, uh, you know, joining this channel. I try being as unbiased as possible about the weather. Um, I, I obviously naturally will have a little bit biased maybe towards, uh, you know, some events, but... Uh, that is, you know, maybe if I get more excited about the snow in my area, for example, I may predict a little bit more snow, but generally I have a really good reputation for staying unbiased and uh, just, you know, really consider subscribing. Uh, check out this channel, check out this video, and, you know, decide for yourself. So the factors we'll be looking at uh, during this uh, outlook is the ENZO outlook, <clears throat> which stands for the El Nino Southern Oscillation. And we'll also be looking at analogs, which is basically comparing previous falls to this year's. And it's not really previous falls, it's specific falls that match up with this year's fall. And then NOAA seasonal outlook. I'm telling you what, um, I originally was planning to include this in here, but I ended up not. And the reason is because it was, I mean, NOAA seasonal outlook... They usually, again, I've already said this in a previous video, they usually just put it out there a couple months ahead, but they don't really adjust it until it's a month ahead of time, and they really don't uh, bother changing anything, and right now it's saying above average temperatures from the whole fall, which obviously uh, that's what they usually say, but um, at this time, this point, most people are ignoring them. Uh, I'm not saying they're going to be wrong, I'm just saying that they usually... Um, just it's not updated. That's what I'm saying. It's just not updated. So there's no point in showing that. So first, uh, I wanted to show you. Also, there's I'm gonna be talking about a little bit of sea surface temperatures as well. So first, uh, I want to talk about the sea surface temperatures. As you could see, for the Enzo, the El Nino Southern Oscillation, we'll be looking at this area right here, the area off of South America, the Peruvian coast and Ecuadorian coast. And this is basically uh, where we uh, look for the temperatures either being above or below normal, a abnormal warming or an abnormal cooling across these areas. Um, and you can see right now, as marked by this, it's an abnormal cooling. So we're more into a La Nina pattern. A La Nina is usually when it is 0 0.5 degrees or cooler, and an El Nino is usually when it's 0 0.5 degrees or warmer. And right now, it's more of a La Nina, but it's still technically neutral because it's really warm out here still. So if we were to look at the probabilistic Enzo outlook, ENSO, uh, sorry I've been saying ENCO, I meant to be saying Enzo, I apologize about that. But you could see that it, a neutral is favored to emerge into the next season and continue through the fall and winter. We're just worried about fall. Okay, and you can see that all we care about is uh again september october and really the only two months we really care about is no october and november because those are the only two months where it snows in fall it really does not snow at least in significant amounts across september but you could see fairly high confidence in neutral uh, 50 60 you know not terribly high but there it's up there and the el nino is pretty low along with the la nina so uh, this is what a enzo neutral winter pattern looks like again this is what usually it looks like for the fall as well especially the ending portion of fall and we are lucky enough that this um you know f gets you know this kind of comes together nicely for us because it's the end of fall that's usually when a snow occurs we, and we could see that even though this is winter pattern this usually still is applicable for late fall you could see the jet stream dives down into the southern uh southern u.s there's a subtropical jet stream warm and wet air are um dry, riding along this jet stream and what these two when they merge they, this could produce a giant uh snowstorm or nor'easter as they call it and it could 
go up here, go up the east coast and possibly produce quite a uh, mess once it taps into this cooler air. And I'll explain why this, you know, why this occurs and why it's looking as if it will occur this year. Um, but for those that still wanted to just, you know, see a, a based on historical data what an Enzo neutral fall pattern looks like you could see this is what I found for fall August through November all these years are neutral patterns or basically what we're expected to uh, get this year and you could see these are again if you remember 2013 2014 that was our most uh, recent neutral Enzo and if you remember that uh, for my area it was the second snowiest winter across many areas it was as well very cold and snowy especially the east portion you can see the west not terribly too chilly at all maybe the northwest getting a little bit of chill but the california area possibly being above average not necessarily you know meaning that there will be a below average precip but look at that i mean that that is pretty significant uh, anomaly for all these years to be below average and you can see that it's definitely there and centered across the eastern u.s now i want to uh, basically uh, also i want to point out that this is august through november if i were to just show you november and october it would be even more cold um it went but when i was making the slide presentation i just decided to go through august through november just to make people happy but you can see what i'm talking about now across uh when i would say sea surface temperatures why it's important see how there's really warm temperatures right here this basically is uh forcing the jet stream to go around this because it can't really penetrate into this warm dome of hot air or <laughs> the dome of hot air and then once it reaches around this point uh, there is uh, there is cold air uh, and also a Greenland high or Greenland blocking high that if you I were to expand this screenshot you would see that this is there's also warm temperatures across uh, Greenland and this what basically it does this just spins the winds and uh, it kind of blocks this jet stream into forcing or you know blocks it and forces it to go like this quite often I'm not saying this is constant but this is what quite often happens and you could see whenever you see a trough in a jet stream that means you'll see colder conditions across these areas and usually when uh, a neutral pattern occurs we also have a subtropical jet stream doing something like this these often do emerge and you know sometimes they produce a nor'easter sometimes it goes further off coast but if you know if the cold air is there and the pacific a subtropical jet stream is there this could really produce quite a bit of snow sorry about that quite a bit of snow across the northeast and mid-atlantic so i that's why i do think the uh, the northeast and mid-atlantic will be fairly above average in terms of snowfall this year so that is another yet another factor why i do think uh, snowfall will be fairly prominent across the eastern u.s and in case anyone else wanted some uh, proof or reasoning as to why I think this fall will be fairly chilly, uh, especially towards the later part, you can see this is September through November. Uh, this is basically a bunch of uh, falls that span from September to November that I took. Let's see if I could uh, expand this a little bit so you could see that better. Uh, so basically, this is a bunch of falls that I took from uh, summers that had similar patterns to this one. And basically, this uh, this summer characteristics were, uh, or, you know, spring as well. We had a chilly spring, or we had a chilly June, we had a mild July, it wasn't too hot. And then now we're looking at a fairly chilly August as well, which all these winters had in common. And you can see that... Uh, what this uh, resulted as was uh, a bunch or uh, several uh, years being very chilly and all in, the anomalies are spanning across much of the country now I don't think it will be this expansive during uh, this onset uh, during this fall but I do think it will be especially chilly across oh let's say this portion of the country and this is what it's looking like as of right now for August and usually when we see cooler conditions in August, we uh, see a correlation to uh, a chillier fall and snowier winter as well. So that's another uh, piece of evidence I had. Uh, let's move on. I wanted to show you also quickly of all those years, a similar summer's pattern, what the precipitation anomalies were. Now this is much harder and much less relevant and let me explain why. Um, so it's much harder to forecast and uh, find because in the future we could have one snowstorm that upsets the average and, and it, it could you know produce probably right here this was probably of all these years probably some tropical storms or hurricanes overlap 
dropped over these areas and you can see it was above average and across the east coast and let me explain this to you guys and you probably already know this but many uh you know if you have snow in fall say november you do not need um a lot of snow to be above average in fall you do not need a lot of precip to be above average in fall when most locations typically don't see a lot so even if the precipitation is below average, as long as you have the chilly air and the atmospheric conditions are right, which I do think everything is fairly, you know, again, as I explained, coming together with the jet streams and a subtropical jet stream, it looks as if, you know, it will be rather snowy. Um, and even again, if it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be above average precipitation, it still could be known as a snowy fall as long as there's chilly conditions. So that it is what really matters. And this is what I want you to show. This is why I want to show you my final outlook now, and or you know who will see who's most likely to see snow this fall. And I took this kind of from a perspective of uh, based on average, but basically well below average. So uh, the most likely to see quite a bit of snow this fall, uh, most likely above average again. So uh, I think they definitely will see snow. It will be above average. These locations I do as think as well will be fairly above average. And now you can see how there's a sharp cutoff because, you know, during these snowstorms, some of these locations will see snow. Some of them will see rain since it's fall. It's still not winter. So I think I would, you know, if I were to add to this now, I would add this area as being kind of like the, uh, through right in here, I would add as being possibly some snow mixed in with some wet rain and you know nothing too terribly great because it's still fall and the conditions are uh, prime but notice how the northeast is i again i have it in that pink as risk for nor'easters because i do think the conditions are very conducive for some large storms this fall um even this winter but i think it could start happening in late november and okay, you could see that average snowfall for those that typically see it so what that means is if you live in the mountainous of in mountains of idaho wyoming montana you typically do see snow in in the fall and you probably will see average snowfall maybe a bit above average in the mountains but uh, the further south you go below average but anywhere else in this area you're most likely not going to see snowfall at all or you know if you typically don't see snow in these areas you probably won't. If you typically do see snow, it will probably be around average. So, uh, you know, that's basically it. wraps it up for today's video. Hopefully it was clear and concise. Hopefully you liked it. Again, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye.